Hi, this is Sheila Oene. I'm presenting on behalf of my co-authors. I will introduce you to our work, Visual Gaze Labeling for Augmented Reality Studies. Augmented reality has gained attention in recent years, together with the development of AR applications in various domains such as training and support for medical procedures, industrial manufacturing and education. AR applications are developed and then need to be evaluated to test the usability or to compare interaction techniques. Common evaluation strategies comprise on the one hand qualitative methods which rely primarily on interviews and questionnaires like NASA TLX. They examine questions like how difficult was the task perceived to be for the user or which approach was preferred by the user. On the other hand, there are quantitative methods that are often restricted to performance measures. They refer to questions such as how long did it take to solve the task or how correct the result was. However, these methods often do not consider why some users perform better than others. Here the use of eye tracking can help to understand the viewing behavior and to help detect design issues. Due to the availability of current HMDs with integrated eye trackers, evaluations based on eye tracking can also be performed in AR scenarios. Different visualization methods can be used to analyze eye tracking data. I will only discuss AOI-based case analysis here since our visualization approach is based on it. In AOI-based case analysis, the semantic information of a stimulus can be evaluated. This means that fixations of case data are mapped to semantically meaningful labels such as objects. They are called areas of interest or short AOIs. The following examples show that the two artworks can be defined as specific AOIs. Then, all gaze data that fall into these regions are labeled with these AOIs. A standard technique to manually annotate gaze data with AOIs is the video-based annotation approach. I will discuss this approach in more detail in a moment, but in short, it's about checking the individual gaze positions in a 2D video replay and labeling them accordingly. The drawback of this method is that it is very time consuming since the annotation process is performed for all fixations of a dataset. Furthermore, it neglects the 3D spatial information of the data. Now I present three annotation techniques for labeling fixations that are part of this work. The example below shows participants wearing eye trackers and viewing artwork. Below is a timeline visualization where each row represents the fixation data of an individual participant. One bar represents one fixation. Fixations, already labeled, are given the same color as the AOIs on the wall. For fixation-based annotation, individual fixations must be selected one at a time to display the fixated region and identify the corresponding AOI. In image-based annotation, the information about the focused area in each fixation is already contained in the representation of a thumbnail image. The main difference with the fixation-based annotation is the information contained in the fixation. With spatial annotation, the fixations are not labeled individually and for each participant. Here the annotation is done in gaze replay, a 3D spatial representation of the AR scene. The individual AOI regions are marked within a 3D model so that all fixation points that fall within the AOI region are automatically labeled. The advantage of this is that the data sets of multiple participants whose fixations lie in the same AOI region can be labeled automatically. The goal of this work is to develop a visualization approach for annotating and analyzing gaze data from AR scenarios by applying common annotation techniques that I presented before to AR scenarios. One difference to traditional eye tracking analysis is the distinction between virtual and real AOIs. The projected virtual content is labeled as virtual AOIs, which can be automatically identified since hit detection can be applied to augmented content. For real AOIs, the standard technique is the video-based annotation. This includes automatic classification and the manual annotation approaches. In addition to video-based annotation, spatial annotation can be applied. Since the virtual AOIs are handled automatically, an approach for the real AOIs was developed. Pure video-based annotation would not consider the spatial information in the context of the environment, especially in AR, 
Spatial context is important to understand how users interact with virtual and real environments. This requires a 3D model of the environment to simulate movement and gaze behavior spatially. Another goal is the multi-user analysis to determine behavior patterns by looking at several users simultaneously. The challenge here is that gaze and movement data occurs in individual coordinates for each user. A uniform coordinate system is required for this. So we build a visualization framework that combines image-based labeling and spatial annotation. We proceeded with our work in three phases. The first phase consists of a showcase scenario in augmented reality to collect gaze data from multiple participants. Here we had to make design decisions to realize the desired goals. The second phase involves processing the collected data to finally create a visualization framework from the data in the third phase. During the first phase, eye tracking data was collected through a pilot study in augmented reality, which served as a case study. We used the Microsoft HoloLens 2 as an HMD equipped with eye tracking. The AR application was developed in Unity. In addition, the MRTK and the ARET toolkit were integrated into application to make the scene AR capable and to capture the gaze. The video shows that with the help of ARET, the gaze can be projected onto the video. Since the virtual objects have a collider, the whole lens produces a spatial mapping of the environment. The gaze hits the virtual and the real objects directly. Our showcase scenario consists of a small art gallery for participants to view. The gallery consists of five images containing artworks of different styles hanging in the room. Each image was enriched with virtual content, such as additional images, informational text and videos. In total, 10 people participated in the pilot study. Five participants viewed the images in clockwise direction and five in the opposite direction to create behavior patterns for the annotation task. The task was to solve questions according to the picture and the virtual information. When a standard whole lens application is started, the origin of the world coordinate system is set to the head pose of the whole lens. Each participant would have an individual coordinate system depending on the initial head pose. The collected gaze data of different participants must be in a common coordinate system to provide comparable data of movement and gaze behavior with a gaze replay for the multi-user analysis. For this, we applied word locking tools. We used four QR markers to transform the coordinate space so that the origin was moved from the head position to a common physical start position. Word locking tools also provide persistence accessions by storing spatial anchors locally. Therefore, we loaded the same spatial anchor for all participants. The AR environment of our pilot study looks like this. A mesh representation of the scene had to be provided to apply spatial annotation later. The whole lens can use spatial mapping at runtime to create an environment mesh. As it is not textured, a second mesh, a textured photogrammetry mesh, was also created. Its position, size, rotation were manually adjusted to match the spatial mesh. The resulted mesh were then used to create a 3D gaze replay in the visualization framework. In the second phase, the collected data from the showcase scenario was further processed to be used in the visualization framework. We extracted the fixations using the velocity threshold algorithm from the 3D gaze positions captured during the study. During the pilot study, a video recording was taken using the whole lens camera. By projecting the identified fixations onto the video recording, we created thumbnails for each fixation. These were used for image-based annotation. The object hit with the gaze was also saved for each gaze point. Therefore, when viewing virtual objects, the gaze data was automatically labeled with virtual AUIs. Now I will present our visualization framework. It consists of two main components, gaze replay and timeline visualization, which enables spatial and image-based annotation. Similar to the concept described at the beginning of the presentation, the timeline visualization contains the fixations represented by the thumbnail images. The fixations are positioned in a timeline horizontally for each participant. The height and width of the thumbnail represent the distance of the fixation from the viewer and a bar around the thumbnail indicate the length of the fixation. The vertical and horizontal zoom sliders at the bottom right allow you to switch from the detailed view to the overview of all participants and all fixations. The gaze replay reconstructs the AR scene 
and simulates the participant's movement and gaze behavior in 3D view. It consists of the textured mesh. The participants are represented by spheres with their names. The ray emitted from the sphere represents a gaze direction. The AR environment can be freely observed from different perspectives and the gaze points up to the current point in time can be visualized by little spheres to highlight the regions already viewed. Spatial orientation happens in gaze replay. In a 3D model, a cube is placed on the AUI region. After selecting the corresponding AUI from the legend or defining a new AUI, click on the region and the cube will be aligned. We call it AUI cube. This cube can be scaled and moved in all three axes. Once an AOI cube is saved, all fixations in the timeline visualization whose 3D positions lie in the selected AOI region get labeled. Our second approach, image-based annotation, allows annotation of individual fixations. By selecting the annotated fixations function, all already labeled fixations are grayed out and do not allow further interaction. Each fixation has the 3D gaze position. When selected, the focused region is mapped in the gaze replay. This provides a spatial context. Each time a fixation is selected, the camera moves in the gaze replay to show the focused region directly. Fixation labeling is not part of our framework. We implemented this approach to compare with our framework as a baseline approach. It can be performed in most eye tracking manual software suites and is independent of dynamically moving 2D boundary shapes for AUI labeling. The working principle has already been introduced at the beginning. Instead of a gaze replay, we have here a video replay where the spatial context is missing. The timeline visualization of our framework supports three different views to get more information about the labeled fixations. I introduce the annotated fixations view, which allow one to select and annotate only unlabeled fixations. The virtual real AOIs feature colors all labeled fixations in the appropriate category, real or virtual AOI. The ratio of real virtual AOIs can be determined and AOI patterns can be observed. The color AOIs function colors all fixations according to the AOIs from the legend. After completion of the labeling process, the AOI sequences and patterns can be identified in the OOU mode. Moreover, we have the remaining fixations function, which selects all remaining unlabeled fixations. This function allows identifying dense fixation regions and then applying spatial annotation to these regions. Another advantage is to label the remaining fixations, which cannot be assigned to a specific AUI as unknown. In a comparative evaluation, we compared the annotation performance of our framework with the fixation-based labeling approach as a baseline technique. Due to time constraints, I will not go into the details, but you can read more about it in our paper. We recruited eight scientific employees from our institute with expertise in visualization research. Our study consisted of two annotation tasks using our approach, the visual gaze labeling approach and the fixation labeling approach. In a within subject design, we separated the data set into two groups consisting of data from four participants in order to keep the time for both annotation tasks with an bearable time frame for the participants. We excluded one part of the data to use it in our training phases for both annotation tasks. Both data groups included about 300 unlabeled fixations to be annotated using the two approaches. For the evaluation, we considered qualitative and quantitative aspects. In the following, I will only discuss the performance and the patterns in the annotation sequences. In summary, similar performances were shown for the two approaches. With visual gaze labeling, annotation took about 20 minutes on average, while it took 23 minutes with the baseline technique. Half of the participants performed better with visual gaze labeling than the baseline technique, with an average difference of 8 minutes. The other half annotated on average 5 minutes less with fixation labeling. We created a visualization of the history of the participant sequences. Patterns can be detected here. During the study, participants repeatedly switched between spatial and image-based annotation, resulting in frequent switching between 2D and 3D view. Most participants increased their speed with spatial annotation over time. This is consistent with usability observations of how easy it is to use the technique after learning period. We assume that for large data sets, this would have resulted in only minor changes in sequence history and slightly higher completion time 
whereas the fixation based annotation would require significantly more time as the annotation process is constrained by the manual annotation of all fixations from each dataset. What is our conclusion and possible extensions planned for the future? I presented a visualization approach for analyzing gaze in AR scenarios and compared it with fixation labeling as a baseline technique. While we measured similar annotation times, we assumed that there is a threshold above which fixation labeling becomes a less efficient approach. We need to determine this in future experiments. From the comments of the participants, we noticed that spatial context play an important role in solving the task and that spatial annotations were generally preferred. We see this as an indicator that AR analysis scenarios should consider including spatial information for context. Since interaction in 3D was more challenging than manual annotation for some participants, we plan to add features to facilitate interaction in gaze replay. We also plan to extend our support for dynamic objects using spatial annotation. Overall, we see this work as an important step in understanding how people perceive augmented environments and how cognitive processes work in this context to solve specific tasks. Thank you very much for listening.